Ludum Dare number 46. So if you, if you hadn't guessed, this one is a homage to the legend that was Keith Flint. It was actually Firestarter. In 1996, I was using a software called Click and Play. What was it, the Games Factory? Yeah, there you go. So, so in, in 1996, um, I was making my first kind of uh, event-driven game things in this software called the Games Factory. Unlike now, I don't, I, there was nobody really to, uh, to, to play them. I think I had a couple of friends I would share floppy disks with. This, this goes back a long time. But um, in terms of actually being able to, you know, publish things, the internet was still uh, very much in its embryonic form back then. So we had things like CompuServe and stuff, but there wasn't anything like the uh, the platforms these days that you have to share games like Itch.io and all that kind of stuff, or you know, Steam Greenlight and all this. None of that really existed. Even you know, uh, Newgrounds and uh, things like that. In terms of sharing the old Flash games, they didn't exist as yet. So these were these are the very early days. One of the songs that was on the radio at the time was Firestarter, making my first games <laughs> back in uh, yeah ninety six. I tried to throw in as many Prodigy Easter eggs as I could. The main one being well, obviously Keith, and the rest of the band members, and the Fox from the album cover. The day is my enemy. I think it came together pretty quickly. I mean, if you travel back in time two years I think to have my um, 2020, there <laughs> I've left the video up just to. Um, so, <laughs> if you uh, really are curious to the very beginning of this, I actually do have like a, a really old video up. So let's go ahead and open up the first files. So I don't, I think this was the first game where I actually had kind of a fully formed idea from the outset. So I don't think I messed around too much with anything else. I think it literally was just working on the, on the concept from the get go. So I think I did by having a, a solid idea up front, I was able to achieve a lot more. Hmm. I think I was just trying to come up with lighting effects. So this is um really very basic. Oh, I do actually have a character here. All right, let's see. Uh, oh, right. So I guess this is where I started adding the um, little Keith Flint sprite. So there he is. Running in and out of the darkness. So now Keith is carrying a little torch. And he takes a bit of light with him. I don't think I've actually added in. Don't think I've added in any mechanics yet for you know maintaining the fire, but that's the the general gist of it. As as the hours approach sunrise, this uh, gradiated sort of uh, pixelated sky gets brighter by just shifting the gradient up <laughs> incrementally. But yeah, not bad. Okay. Making good progress, I guess, because I've got like, um, if he stands next to a tree, branches fall off, kicks the tree. But I, uh, I, can't, I, can't, I can't collect them yet, I don't think. I don't know what the music, the sound doesn't work anymore now, which is really annoying. Uh, still, still says hello world. What? <laughs> okay, I've had the fox. Oh. Uh, invisible trees. Let's have a look at the fixed one then, shall we? Oh. <laughs> I, 
Wait. We still need one. Oh my! I think this was the last, the last version I did. I think uh, some tweaks after the competition I added, added a few more gameplay mechanics. The main thing being. Oh god. Uh, right, yeah, so a little animation saying where the fire is. Little, um, what do you call it, icon. Don't know which direction the fire is in, like so. And then uh, I reuse the same thing in blue to then indicate there's a squirrel about to fall off the tree. Then he gets hit on the head by the squirrel and gets uh, dazed. Squirrel falls on his head, <laughs> gets knocked down. Oh, uh -oh. Once <laughs> the fox got more wood than I did. stuff so there's the if I just get rid of all this this is the gradient texture that then gradually moves up as the day moves on like so very simple but yeah there you go so that's the, uh, the walk animation and then the longest animation ever That's that, I guess. Um, I did try doing a chip tune version of um, Firestarter, but um, well, so I went with a generic kind of um, chip tuney kind of thing again, as usual. Almost like an adventure game kind of vibe, I guess. So one thing I did that was mildly interesting with this was the I flipped between a sort of clean drum sound and then a horribly crunchy kind of crushed bit crushed kind of sound so I had like that kind of sound and then controlling it with an envelope here so normal drums High quality rock kit, so uh, yeah, it does sound quite well. It sounds a bit more authentic than most kind of MIDI tracks, I guess. Still doesn't sound like a real drum kit, but but I like that kind of mixture, I guess, of going from like a clean sound to then this. So I think in the background, with just uh, really simple oscillators, we should have done some real guitar as well. Number 46. I'll see you next time.